and welcome to a special review of B25 Set Wave 1 based on the Acid Wayne World series. If you have any line of military figures set in an alternate timeline where World War II never ended and of course resulted in nuclear warfare and the entire world governments falling apart struggling to gather resources. Eventually all the Governments were split into smaller governments, imagine like all the states were their own government and all the European countries were split into tiny fractions, kind of like a Mad Max world. As Rain World were released as G.I. Joe sized figures originally and they were very detailed, articulated, as well as almost looked like they were painted by model artists. But you didn't have to paint it yourself, it came out of the box as is, with uh, boxes with little gimmicks on holes in them where you can feel the texture of uh, rusted paint and all that. This is the B25 line where the figures are much smaller. The 2.5 scale instead of the 3.5 inch scale of the original series. The small one is currently at Wave 1 and Wave 2 is out for pre-order right now, at least in Hong Kong, so you can probably pre-order that around the world. Full disclosure, this was given to me as review copies. I did not have to buy this myself and this is the entire Wave 1 set. For more information about them, you can see the links in the video description below, but they have the www.acidrainworld.com, the company website is skronex.com, and finally they also have a YouTube page where they have some slideshows that look pretty nice of their latest products. All four of these boxes were shipped to me via how they will officially be shipped to any customers who order them, I expect, because every single one of these boxes were put into a plastic bag that's taped shut. Outside that plastic bag there's bubble wrap and the box in the bag in the bubble wrap is again put into a cardboard box here. You can see the basic information here, uh, what the set number is and what's going on. This box is taped up and because he sent four of these boxes to me, these four boxes were taped together and then put into a bigger bag that was shipped to me. So, Christ, they really want to protect the item when you order them. Boxes also show a lot of detail and different poses of the items that you will get inside, as well as warning information and what exactly what you get inside is also printed on the back of the box, which is definitely useful. I really don't like boxes where they sort of hint, eh, are these bits sold separately? Maybe not. Are these characters really posing with this? Wave 1 consists of four sets. We have BW102, K6 Jungle Soldier, Agates Military. We have a second set here, this is the BW101, the R711 Speeder Mark 1 kit, also from Arcid Military. Hope I'm saying that right. <laughs> There's also a video game for this by the way, which I've not played, it's a mobile app. And then we have this K K6 Jungle Stronghold ST2K, which is pretty nice green machine. And let's quick look at the back of the box, showing you, hey, you can transform this thing and pose them in many different poses, including the superhero landing. It's bad for the knees, by the way, even if you are a neck. And finally, we have this 88th Sand Deluxe set, which consists of the Stronghold and the Speeder Mark 1. So basically, the blue box and the green box, but in this sort of sand color. There are some slight differences between the one in here and the one in the smaller set. And here's a quick look at the back of the box. Now if you go look online and you search for the Wave Zero, Wave Zero does also consist of a few soldiers as well as a uh, grey coloured mini speeder kit. So if you like the colour grey then you're going to have to, I don't know, find on eBay or something because they are sold out. The back of the boxes also contain a QR code that goes to the instructions of how to transform this thing. And you go online and there'll be a single PDF file telling you how to do this. Which I think is actually a pretty decent way to handle it. It's, you know, wasting less paper. It's a greener way just to get the instructions online. So that's actually a pretty good thing. It's just one of those things that's definitely different from other toy companies because this toy line is designed by the artist himself and produced and all that. The box also specifically shows the website for this line of the Asset Rain World toys, which is b25.com, b25shop.com, info at b25.com and sales at b25.com as well as the plastics used to make this. Made in China, ABS, POM and PVC. So it's come in these plastic shells, very similar to what you might get from Bandai or Figma or any other toy brand. And uh, all these have little tabs on them as well as sellotape on each end to keep these shut. And uh, weapons and items are, have their own tray and there should be a plastic bag there but I've already opened this once and I 
chucked away the, pl the plastic bag. Here's an example of the plastic bag holding the items, but I didn't think a plastic bag is needed to hold on to a uh, well, single pistol. And you see, all these are packaged this way, and that makes them very, very secure, and that's pretty cool. In the Jungle Soldier Arming Building set, you get three figures here. We've got a captain and two sort of identical soldier units, as well as a bunch of weapons. We have two sort of standard pistols, and then we have a rocket holding pack with two removable rockets. They're a little bit hard to pull out the fingers, but there are two tiny holes on the back of the pack, so you can put a pin in there just to push the rockets out. And the rockets can be, of course, attached to the actual rocket launcher. But again, the rocket can be removed, so that's pretty cool. We have two little sort of uh, automatic rifles here. They look pretty detailed, pretty cool. And finally, we also have two pretty cool mini guns. They've got two handlebars there, so you can hold it properly, as well as a spinning, rotating machine gun bed. That can also come off here. Now, of course, comes with a blue speeder, transforming speeder, as well as the pilot's unit with a helmet that I think he looks like an android, I'm not sure if he is. And he also comes with a single pistol, which is the same as the one from the other pack. The unit, of course, has the robot pilot, and he has a pistol again, let's put him to the side. The uh, two machine gun attachments to the mech itself, but unfortunately they don't have any rotating function, uh, so that's that. Two little attachment joint units, uh, more on that later. We have the leg or treads for the machine. Uh, these are not spinnable or articulated, unlike the big ones. The main body of the unit, and the two sort of arms and slash cannons for the main unit. And yes, because these are transforming and combining toys, it's all split apart in the actual box. The like said, we have a sand colored speeder, just like the blue one, and we have a main sort of stronghold unit that's very similar to the green one, but not exactly the same. But the amount of pieces we get is the same. The difference being that the uh, there's also a human pilot instead of a robot one, and he's holding a sniper rifle. The other android is just holding a pistol, just like the other sets. And the uh, attachment units here for the arms for the mech, as well as these two little guns are not machine guns, a little, little sort of cannon fire. And they also have different colored attachment joint units. And again, I'll explain that a bit later. Speeder units are molded identically, they're just painted different. In the front middle there, we have a little mini, mini machine gun that is attached via a board joint, meaning that it has quite a lot of articulation and can get out of the way when you're driving in the most part. The wheels do spin, but they are made out of hard plastic, so no rubbery grip or anything. And on a smooth surface like this, you can see it's not really spinning, but if you're playing this on a sofa or carpet or some more of a rough surface, then yeah, the wheels will start turning. And on the side of here, we have some different print jobs there, different labels and details on different units of the army. And on the top there, we have a little bunny thing printed on there. And this one has a little... But yes, both of these are pretty sturdy in the sort of vehicle mode. They're pretty good. And of course, these are transforming units. One note here, on the side, you have these little holes, which you can attach these attachment units onto. So you can plug this into there if you want to, and it will go in. Uh, on the other hand, you can also plug these. These are also swappable, these machine, these big gun things, so you can plug those in. And you already have a slightly different speeder unit. So that's pretty cool. So let's do a transformation here. So what you have to do is, you can see these, there's a little ball joint in the middle somewhere. So you just flip that out, and then you can flip these gray bits out, flipped all the way, so they're hitting against the tire. And then you rotate these outward this way, both of them. And then you have a little speeder mech thingy. Of course, this is not very menacing as such, so this is where you start adding the gun attachments and stuff. In order to get the pilot in, there's a little clip around here, just pull that up. What it looks like with a pilot sitting in the little speeder. It doesn't look like it's the most comfortable thing to be driving. Uh, I'll definitely have a bad back if I had to drive this for a few hours, but hey, it's a post-apocalyptic world in the army, so I don't think comfort is the main thing. Safety isn't the main thing, because he's not protected at all, I can just shoot him with a sniper. But yes, um, this thing stands pretty well, and it's mostly aided with the board joints that they've chosen on the top of the legs there, so kudos to that, the board joints really do help a lot in posing this figure in different stances and such bigger unit so when the first time you get it out of the package you will have to do some basic assembly so you can see these two holes are the same but in mech mode you stick it into the middle one 
the middle piece. <laughs> and then you get these arm pieces and also stick these in. So let's see, you just get that in right there. Note that these arm joints are the same thickness as the bottom of the wheel piece. So there's some sort of mix and match thing going on here. So what you want to do is you get these arms out. The fingers are articulated on got the double joints on the fingers and the thumb is a little ball joint. That's really cool. Just get these out. There are a lot of little tabs here and there on this machine to make sure that the transformation is uh, sturdy on both ends in tank or mech mode. Flip these up for more details. There, there's some little panels there that you can flip up. Gives it more detail going on. So that's pretty cool. And then you have this thing in its mech mode. Now there are a few places where you can attach the machine guns. And of course you can swap this around with the one from the other set. So you can get little, little rocket launchers if you want to. You see there are more holes on here. There's one here. Here, here, here. So there are a bunch of holes, even on the wheels, on the legs, a bunch of holes everywhere, so you can attach these everywhere you want. And this piece here, the hole is the same size as the arm. So if you think he's not tough enough, you get this piece, like just stick that in any of the holes, uh, plug that in, and now you have an extra armament. And you can see, it's actually quite sturdy. The clutch is really good, even on the smooth joints, it's not falling down due to the weight. Obviously, if you plug a few more of these in and daisy chain them, you're gonna suffer, but. Um, as so of right now, you put an extra one in, it's not going to fall. And some of the joints are clicky joints, like very tight clicky joints. While I'm not a fan of clicky joints for the most part for action figures and stuff, I think it works here because it's a mech, it's more robotic. Plus, you do need something for a little click to hold on to, you know, bigger pieces. And yes, that does mean that you can attach these bigger units onto this tiny bike, which looks hilarious, but hey, you can do that. Uh, and look, hey, it's still standing up pretty well. Look, it's not falling. So kudos to that. So let's transform this into its tank mode. So let's see, let's close these fingers up. And uh, this is one of the bits I don't like too much because this bit is uh, quite fidgety. And uh, this is one of the hardest bits that I'm definitely worried sometimes I'm going to break anything. But nothing's break so far, so that's, I mean, that's good. But it does get a little bit worrying when I'm putting a lot of strength on it because I can't... You need to get the angles just right to plug everything in. Or uh, else it won't. So the, the downside is, is that this bit is a little bit tough to plug together. But the upside is, is once it's plugged together, it is very, very secure. So you just want to get these arm pieces back in. Just plug them back in. And they also have tiny little tabs to tab into each other. And now you have a little tank unit. So that's pretty cool. And in terms of articula articulation as the tank unit, you have this. It's a little rotating bit. You also have the window that can open up so the pilot can have a better look if his window is fogged up or something. And you open up the base unit. There's no light in this unlike the big one, but hey, it is the small one. And you can easily fit a figure in there. And the pilot is sitting inside the tank and you can see it's exact. Uh, when his arms are attached to little handlebars, his torso and legs don't can't really move. It is very, very precise. In fact, it's so precise that the head has to look up when you're closing this down because the plastic will rub against it and then you'll push the head off. Um, but uh, once you've done that, you can move this window up and you can you know, move the head around and be like, hey, what's up? And that's really useful for animation pieces. Kudos. In tack mode, he also has a little hole there. That's because on the back of these units, there's also a little hook. So you can daisy chain a few of these together into a little, like a little car train thing going on. The handlebars here that can hold on the minifigures, so that's more attachment things going on. As well as the speeder unit. At the bottom of the speeder unit, there are two little clippy joints things. So you can plug this onto there if you want to. And of course, that means you can also daisy chain a bunch of the other sort of rocket units. So you can make a really, really thick and big chunky tank thing going on so people who like transformers and also buildable units you know that appeals to people like me who like playing with lego this is a pretty cool addition i'm not a big fan of mechs like gundam or transformers or whatnot but i think because this is also a tank as well as it has some of these little gimmicky uh combining functions i makes me like these a lot more than just regular transformers the desert one from the deluxe set is almost the same as the green one except for the following details. Uh, of course you got the different colors and different paint jobs and you got these two different cannons apart aside from the machine guns from the original one. And you have on the side these blocks are the ones that are the main difference, these two big arm blocks. 
First of all, it's uh, got a little panel here that comes down. These little pegs actually fit on the bottom of the feet of the minifigures, uh, so they can stand a bit better, just like action figures with little peg holes so they can attach to things. Not all of these peg holes are good enough though. Some These two ones, I can't get figures to stand on them because they're too small, or the holes on the feet are too big. But uh, these ones fit, and because these handlebars fit for the figures uh, holding on to the tank. And this main difference is, you can see, it doesn't have a hand, and instead, there's a little push button here. Just push that down. You get spring-loaded rockets that pop out. They don't shoot out. And once you're done with these cannons, you can just push them back in, or clip back in, and then you close these doors. Next up, we come to the minifigures, and all of them are actually pretty decent. They are very, very much articulated, which would remind me of, uh, you know, Mega Bloks figures. And just for comparison, here is a Picard Mega Block figure, putting right next to one of these guys. You can see the height difference. And for another comparison, here is a Lego minifigure right next to them, so you can see a bit of the difference there. They're just a little bit bigger than the Mega Block stuff, just about a head taller. Head in a bit, and of course, they are almost double the height of a Lego minifigure. The figures here are molded pretty detailed, but of course, you can see a lot of common used parts. And so far, they are also generic soldier units. They're none of the main characters from the main 3.5 inch line available here. And I don't, I'm not sure if they're going to be in the future. But there you go. And the difference between these and the big ones is of course the helmets cannot be removed from the head, uh, which is something that you can do with the regular 3.5 inch line. The figures for the most part are made with a hard plastic, but the belt, the armor pack on them, the vests, as well as the head are made out of a softer rubbery plastic. And yes, that means you can remove the vest from the figure, you just have to unplug the arms from the body. Just like Lego or Mega Bloks, certain parts on these figures are also swappable, interchangeable if you want to do that. You can see there's still a little bit of detail molded on the torso. All of them have the exact same torso mode. There's a little uh, chest pocket as well as the little button and line of the shirt that they're wearing. So that's pretty cool. On to the articulation. Now the head is on a single board joint. That works pretty fine. And arms on a little swiveling joint. Uh, so you got the swivel on this side as well, and you got a single joint for the elbow and a peg joint for the hand. Little bit of a molding hole there. Um, torso there is very similar to the DC action figures where you have a little uh, tummy joint, little setup joint, <laughs> and a rotating joint underneath that. You also look back a little bit, and the leg, upper legs on a little ball peg with a top swivel here that's cut just right that you don't really see a joint there single knee joint and the feet on little ball pegs so they have a lot of articulation options going on another good thing about these figures is that the hand can hold on to Lego items so yeah if you have Lego or Mega Bloks you already have a lot of accessories that you can attach to these guys such as the lightsaber that he's holding right here have someone poorly singing karaoke creeping the floor so yes, that means it works the other way around as well. The uh, alien figure fits quite well next to it. It's a little bit small, but it still kind of works. The normal face hugger kind of works. I wonder if the face hugger can go around the head. Oh, almost. I guess if I fiddle with that a little bit, I can get it around his head. Like... here are pretty good there's just two minor problems this belt has a little bit of excess plastic right there so I'll probably just cut that off and trim that that'd be fine but uh, this one here this hand in particular if I just uh, rotate this it pops out the joints far too tight and this hand falls out really easily if I just peg it in there you hit a little snap it stays in there but as soon as I rotate this arm it wants to pop out like almost like it's spring loaded or something so I'm to have to like drill the hole a little bit more in the arm or sand down the peg just a little bit so it doesn't keep popping out but other than that these figures are highly articulated pose really well and the clutch on all of these are all really really good and plus with the ball joint on the feet they can pose very very nicely if the figures all of them have a little hole on the back of the armor piece as well as the torso itself so you can peg them into things if you need to put them in you know epic display stands and whatnot so that's pretty useful
The original toy line at 3.5 inches was highly detailed, highly articulated, and fit in with pre-existing G.I. Joe toy lines, making it very accessible for people who already like military figures and whatnot. But they were also very expensive. But you do get what you pay for, it's just not a lot of people can afford that kind of price or justify for it. This 2.5 inch line is a lot cheaper than the original 3.5 and as you can see here, aside from being smaller, there's also a bit of a less detail going on compared to the bigger ones. The original 3.5 inch line all look like they're hand painted by model kit enthusiasts and they all look very very detailed. What we have here is very similar to what Mega Bloks would do. Instead of having painted details, the plastic itself is molded with a little bit of different colors mixed into it. So every single one will look different from the other because the plastic mixing process is going to make everything slightly random. They still look good and they are still very articulated. I have to be honest that I would have never picked these up myself, I wouldn't buy them from the shops because the price tag on these are still a little bit higher than other toys at this kind of scale. But I'm glad the creator himself did get in touch to my YouTube channel and send these over because after playing around with these for a while, I think the price is justified. You're buying something from a smaller company and from an artist himself instead of a big conglomerate, a big corporation, and you can tell that there's a lot of love and design that gone into these things. Playability is also pretty nice. In short, while there are one or two issues here, you are getting what you pay for. They cost a little bit more than some of the other toys out there, but the quality is also just that little bit better than a lot of other toys out there. So if you like the army building line and you want something in the 2.5 inch, maybe something cheaper than the original 3.5 inch line because those are really expensive, but you still like the design, you still like the looks, of the world, then this is something for you to get. As for people doing animations and stuff, I also think these are going to be pretty good for doing those you know, stop motion films. They're generic enough that you can fit them into your own story, while they still have just enough of a background that if you want to follow the official storyline, you can do that as well. So yes, if you do think these toys are a little bit expensive, but you really like the look and design of these, maybe considering picking one of these packs up. If you're only going to get one pack just to try it out, I would probably recommend either the Soldier Pack, the Three Little Soldiers, just so you can feel what the minifigures are like. But if you really like the mechs, then definitely pick up the Deluxe Pack, because you just get a bit of everything from this Wave. Wave 2 is also out for pre-order right now and they have a few more unique designs in that, so if you like what you see here, definitely check out their website for Wave 2. Thanks again for sending these for review. I am considering doing a stop motion shot for this. Um, I've got a few ideas in my head. If you found this video useful or enjoyed it, please consider clicking the like button, subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and share this video with other people that you think might find this interesting. As always, you can support this channel by turning off adblock, that will help me so much. Or if you don't want to deal with adblock, you can consider heading over to the Patreon link in the video description below. Or if you have something that you want to get reviewed on this toy channel, you can consider sending me a message on YouTube, but probably better on Facebook because sometimes you should chuck things in the spam folder. So send me something to review, I'd be happy to do that, but I will say that I'll still be very honest with the toy. So don't think I'm going to be biased if you send me free stuff. I have to be honest to my viewers or else my word will mean nothing. Take care, have a nice day. I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye now.